plenty of oil on my head, plenty of anointing. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I'll dwell in the house of the Lord forever. You take that anointing that God has given you. Don't pay attention to what people are telling you. People will tell you anything to draw you away from Jesus. You can't pay attention to everything people say, says. So you take that anointing that you have and you run with it. Run for the Lord. Be crazy for the kingdom of God. It's better than being nutty for the world. God bless you. And you have a wonderful day. Yes, when you're serving the Lord, you will be fully anointed by his Holy Spirit. You cannot lose with the stuff God uses. Amen. He'll prepare your table right in front of your enemies. God will let other people know that he has his hand on you. And you know, sometimes other people know that he has his hand on us before we even know he has his hand on us. It's a shame to say it, but sometimes other people notice it. And you don't even notice that God has his hand on you yet because you don't understand it all yet. See? But out of jealousy from other people, a lot of people aren't, aren't going to tell you that you have that, that God has his hand on you. They see that special things happen to you and that you want for nothing. They can see that and they can tell that, but they're not going to tell you because it's not happening to them yet. Their faith isn't in, in God isn't as strong as your faith is in God. See, David sang this song. He sang it because he loved the Lord. He, this is a testimony of God's presence in David's life. See? David speaks of sheep and a shepherd. David is speaking of divine providence. You know, we should have no fear of lack. This is what the enemy wants you to do. He wants you to always fear. I might run out of food. I don't have enough money. I can't pay for my kids' lunch in school. I don't have gas for my car. I might not be able to pay rent. My bills are due. You know, he wants you to worry like that because when you worry on things like that instead of giving it to the Lord, it's taking your mind off of Jesus. As soon as you turn your back on Jesus... And put your face towards these problems. You've turned your back on him and he can't help you. You won't let him help you. Believe that God is going to give you spiritual rest and spiritual food. A place to lay your head. Water, nice cool water. Amen. It speaks of restoration. We all need some restoration in our lives. I'm sure you watching this video need restoration. I know people out there need restoration from uh, having a bad marriage. There's so many divorces nowadays. People just get tired of each other and get divorced. You know, either the lady gets fat, you know, the wife gets fat, or the husband watches sports too much or something, or you know, they, don't, they don't find each other attractive or anything anymore. Just simple things. You know, I... I, I mm. Just simple things. I was going to say something, but now is not the time. Who oh, Jesus. But we need to learn that God will never leave us nor forsake us. Some of the worst things that you've gone through in your life. You know, when David was in the hills watching the sheep, he was going through bad things. He, he beat a lion. He beat, he beat lions off to keep them from eating up the sheep. And probably more than just lions while he was up there in the hills. He had, to, he had to go through storms and bad weather. He had to go through drought probably and rains. You know, he had to go through a lot. You've got, you got to remember shepherds are, are walking around with food. A lot of other, the other animals didn't see those sheep as, as other animals. They saw them as food. They saw them as, as lunch and dinner, <laughs> breakfast, lunch and dinner, you know. 
David had to go through a lot, but he put his trust in God and he allowed God to give him peace in whatever it was he was doing. Whatever it is you are doing in your life, ask God to give you peace to go through it. Peace and contentment. One must first be content where they are in order to, for God to take them somewhere else. God wants you to learn to appreciate where you are, what you are, what you have, whether you're black or white. He wants you to appreciate your life. No matter what country you are in. Some of you out there living in countries where you're lucky to eat every day. You know, everybody's not living in an air-conditioned building. Riding buses back and forth to work or driving two or three cars per family to work. But I want you to know today that God is with you. I want you to know today that God will not let anything happen to your soul. He will not let the enemy take your soul if you allow him to lift up a standard against the enemy and put the enemy back in his place. You know, you have the power of God within you. And for those that don't understand, I want to tell you this today. You have God on your side. And with God on your side, you cannot lose. If you knew the stuff I've been going through the last few years of my life, It seems like the more I speak, the more I preach, the worse things get sometimes. And it's true. A lot of times they do. Because you can't preach on something that you've never been through. See, I'm, I'm going off, huh? I'm, I'm going different ways. But it's true. You cannot preach about something that you, have, that you don't know about. So God will take you through something and, so that you'll have... See, we're supposed to gain wisdom from it. We're not supposed to get bitter. God leads us by the still waters, see? After you go through something, you're a little upset, a little dirty, a little dry, you know, maybe a little sweaty. You jump in the nice cool water and clean yourself off. You ask God to forgive you if you've done anything that was against him. And you know you are forgiven, so you continue on. The correct path in life. Amen. And you dwell in the house of the Lord. For, you will be in God's house forever and ever and ever. God does not sit high on a throne hurling lightning bolts at us every time we do something wrong. When God gave us the law in a, in, in a, in a new part, in the old part of the Bible, the Old Testament. What he did was he was setting the mark. If you do something you have no business doing, you're going to pay for it, one way or the other. You're going to pay for it. And it's not, be, it's not, not bad things don't happen because you deserved it or God said it was your time. No, you brought it on yourself. You know, people look up and say, why God, why me? Why did this happen to me? Why did you do this to me? God didn't do that to you. You did it to you. When you decided to cheat on your wife, or when you decided to cheat on your husband, and leave that beautiful family at home that you have at home, poor little, the poor little kids sitting there waiting on you every night, waiting for you to come home. God didn't do that to you when it finally gets revealed that you're a cheater, a double dipper, so to speak, as they call them. You can't, you know, you can't keep yourself still. God didn't do that to you. When you lose your house and you lose your family and you're sitting up in court, and, and, and the judge takes half of what you have. God didn't do that to you. You did. When you steal something, money, belongings from someone or whatever, and you end up paying for it and your name gets bad and gets out there in the street, God didn't do that to you. You did. Amen. You brought it on yourself. So I suggest... That you dwell in the house of the Lord forever and live a, correct, live a good life. Enjoy your life. God wants you to enjoy your life. He wants you to know that you are anointed and it can get stronger if you ask him to make it stronger. 
God bless you.